Have you ever felt? Today, I'm just going to do a tutorial about root beer. Can you talk up? Nope. Okay. This is kind of a long-awaited fly. Everybody knows about the low-fat minnow. I think we've done four videos on that now. Or three. I don't know. But, um... The thing about the low-fat minnow is it was created to be fished with a sinking line because it's kind of a suspending fly. Um, we've been asked several times about a sinking minnow, and the belly scratcher minnow is really, really good at what it does. Um, but it's a little bit different makeup because it's got rabbit. This one's uh, much closer to a low-fat minnow. Um, so we started playing with it, hiding a cone inside the, the minnow. And it works really, really well. Um, the other change that, that I've made is using craft fur for the tail really tapers it down a little bit more naturally than, than marabou. Uh, marabou works great, but you know you have to kind of search for that really prime marabou where craft fur is kind of the same across the board. So it simplifies the fly a little bit, uh, makes it swim maybe a little bit differently. But in, in testing that we've done here, uh, it's got a really good jigging motion. And I think the main motivation for me tying this fly is so that it can be fished in smaller rivers, uh, like the Provo River that we fish quite a bit, uh, just with a sinking line. I mean, a, a floating line. So first things first, this is an interesting hook. This is a Teflon coated streamer hook. It's the new Fulling Mill streamer stripper hook. And this thing is a beast. We've been using this. I basically replaced all my Gamakatsu B10Ss for this guy. No, it's not because I, I'm a contract tire for Fulling Mill. It's just really good. Uh, so try that out. I've got a size small tungsten bead on this, or a tungsten cone on this. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure this tungsten cone stays put while I tie. So what I do is I, I add just a few wraps of O2O lead wire like this and then I'm going to move the cone up on top of it but I want to make sure it's right in the right, sp right spot so I want just enough room on this fly to be able to tie in the bruiser blend which is going to go over the cone so that's a good placement right there so to get that to stick I'm going to take some loon thick and I'm going to just put that on top of the, the lead. You don't need much. I'll slide that cone forward. And zap it. So again, I mean that, if I really cranked on that, that would slip off of there, that's fine. I just want it to stay in that spot while I tie the fly. So I'm going to put a little bit of thread in front of that, just in case that lead decides to slide forward. And then start my thread behind it. So the color combo that I'm going to do today is just a, a good chub minnow pattern. Um, and we found that this works as a mullet. It's worked as, uh, you know, a juvenile trout. Just a good whitish mayf or mayfly. My phone's going off. Stupid <laughs> Brandon Mena is texting me during this tutorial. Feather Flinger, I don't appreciate it. Just kidding, he's texting me Trump, Trump jokes. All right, so the color on this. Uh, we're going to do a uh, kind of a, a chub minnow color because it's just super versatile in this, this lighter color. Okay, so here's kind of a raw clump of 
of craft fur that I've pulled out. And I'm going to take a comb and I'm going to brush the, the under fluff from the base. We'll get rid of that. And then I don't want it to be quite that long. So I'm going to start pulling out some of these longer fibers. And you kind of have to be careful that you don't ruin the taper of it. So you might have to adjust it a little bit. If you roll it in your fingers a little bit, you'll find how truly tapered that is. So what I'm going to do is I'll just tie this in. Um, I don't know, the tail length is about two and a half, three times the length of the shank of this hook. I'll just lay that down and tie it in right here. And you can come in here and add more taper if you want. Trim off the butts. Then I'm just going to do the same exact thing with a piece of cream and I'm just going to put that right in front of the white. So you can see how that's building a nice taper back. So we pulled out one of our old favorite materials, which is uh, polar chenille, but this time it's the medium sized. So it's about half the length. And I just want to use this to kind of keep the, the head puffed out a little bit. So I'll just tie that in. We'll give it, I don't know, several wraps until we get it nice and up to the bead, the cone. So I've preened them back. Those fibers are sweeping back just a little bit. And now I'm just going to throw a hand whip finish behind that bead. And I'll put some head cement on behind there. We've reattached our thread and I want it hanging right behind the eye of the hook because that's where we're going to tie in our, our head material which is going to be Bruiser Blend Junior. So cream is going to be for the top and white for the bottom. And I know it's kind of hard to distinguish the difference in these colors with the with the brightness of the, the camera but they're, they're actually pretty subtle and if you did this fly in pure white it would still be really really good. So I've got the fibers, I've preened them until they're all kind of facing the same direction. Then I'm going to clump them all up and pinch about that much out and that's where my tie in is going to be. So those fibers should barely be covering up that cone. So three or four wraps, get that tied in and we're going to do the same thing on the bottom with white. And if anything, I see people probably use too much bruiser blend on this fly. So keep it somewhat sparse. You'll be good to go. Okay, as you can see, I've got two big old clumps of dubbing coming off the front of this. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that the cream is covering half of the hook. So I kind of fan it out. And same thing with the white. But I'm going to do the cream first. So I, I fan that out just like that. And I'm just going to push it all back and wrap right over like just a few millimeters back from that. Then I'll fan the bottom out. And I'll do the same thing. The key with doing this on the bottom is lift your thread up, then pull it under, and wrap that in place. It doesn't, doesn't look super great yet. 
And then I'm going to just take the thread behind the eye of the hook and whip finish. Okay, once we've got to this point, I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to brush all those fibers out. Just kind of preen them back with my fingers. You can see that nice bait fishy profile at this point. Get that little brushed out a little better. All right. A little trick to tying low fat minnows or the high carb minnow now is you're going to take some flat edged pliers or forceps or something and you're going to come in here and squish that head flat. What that does is it creates a nice flat base for you to stick the eyes onto it. So once we've done that, we're ready to color it up. So I do two, two tones on the top and just a single on the bottom. And we'll add a little detail later, but this is the desert tan colored chart pack. And I'm just going to kind of color over the top of that beige. Color it back. See how that, it doesn't really go into it very well until you take your finger and you blend it in with your finger. So now we've got a, a really nice blended color in there. The next color is the Delta Brown chart pack, and I just kind of do a strip over the top of that. I'll do the same thing, blend that in. So now you get that kind of dirtyish bait fish color. And it's okay if it just the color's up at the head. And then for the the belly, I like to take the goldenrod. And just color that up on the belly. Just like that. At this point, we're ready for some eyes. Uh, 3 16 or 5 millimeter eyes um, are, are the best. I've really started to like this super pearl color. So I'm going to stick those eyes on right behind the eye of the hook. Get them nice and placed and then kind of squeeze them tight. All right, so this is kind of a tricky part because you're not going to be able to squeeze them as tight to the thread as you will with the low fat minnow because there's a cone there. So what I do is I kind of get them where I want to be with my fingers. So I'm going to squeeze my fingers in place and from the top here I'm going to just fill that little gap with a little bit of loon flow. Not very much. Just enough to kind of get everything wet in there and then I'm going to hurry and cure that while I'm still squeezing it. And that will kind of set those eyes in place where I want them. I can still adjust them a little like I just did. And then to really get them to sit, you do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, so our eyes are where I want them to be. Now, the, the key with resin is if you just stuck the eyes on with resin like that, they would pop right off. It's not, a, it's not really a good adhesive. But if I encase the whole head with resin, then it will be super durable. So I'll take more loon thick and I'm going to fill in the gaps above and below the head. And I'm just going to probably put a ton more resin on than I need or that it looks like I need. And I'll rotate that until I can get it to sit in, in where I want it. So. I'm going to take a bodkin and I'm going to push that to the back of the eye and I'm going to push it just slightly behind the eye and make a little ring of resin. So you can see that little tiny ring of resin. It's like half a millimeter wide. That is critical, 
Curtis, stock coffee. Jeez. Oh, That's critical to making a super durable head. So now you can see that on both sides, how that resin just barely goes into the bruiser blend. It looks like I need a little tiny bit more on top of this fly. And on bottom, and then I'll just rotate that for it to kind of blend into place. And then while I'm rotating it, I'll just cure it. Curtis. <coughs> Curtis literally has been eating nothing but a diet of gobstoppers and Snickers all day. And he just passed gas, and it is rancid. That's coming out. Oh my gosh. We should give this minnow away because it's scented. Okay, now I'm going to take Loon Flow, and I'm just going to put a really tiny layer on that. Um... One of the things with a thicker resin, sometimes you'll get a little bit of tack, not the end of the world. So you just put a little bit of flow on there and that will take that tack away. And I know in the comments we will get people that say, if you get tack on your resin, it's not cured all the way. Alright, we get it. So cure up the flow and now on this one, you can take it the extra step, like it's it's completely done. This is a fish slayer right now. But what I've been doing a little bit is taking a an extra fine sharpie and making little gill gill uh, plate markings, kind of like that. And then you can take a red marker if you want and add a little bit of gill ish stuff sticking out right on the bottom I mean you can get super detailed with these but just kind of like that anyway that's the high carb minnow um, you're gonna see this in a whole bunch more colors but the chub this one right here is just straight up money anyway you can tie this fly because it's got craft fur and you know sizes up to about two hot and have them be really nice and proportionate so Give them a tie, give them a tie, uh, oh I screwed that up, tie them up, fish them, and let us know where you're fishing them and what fish you're catching on them. This is Cheech, I'm signing off.